What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Zell back with another video. And this video right here, it's going to be a little more serious. It's going to be about the things I wish people knew about having sickle cell and also like people in the medical field also. But I'm not going to be taking disrespectful shots to all people in the medical field. It's just some things, you know. Uh, if you happen to like this video, please like, share, and subscribe if, it, if you liked it. But breaking off into the first point is doctors, bruh. Certain doctors, see, I'm not talking about all of them. The ones who really mean well, I want to thank y'all for y'all services. Because I know you guys really care. And those hours that y'all pull off and shifts, it's amazing. But this one is about a different type of doctor. So this one is about the doctors like who think that they... Like, because they have a, a certificate or they got their credentials in that field and everything. That they know everything better than the person with the actual disease who's been dealing with it for a long time. A disorder, disease, or whatever. Who's been dealing with it for a long time. And they know the things that is wrong with them. For example, right? When, I, when I've, I've been to the hospital many times... And have told doctors straight up, like, me being in my 20s, I know. I've been dealing with this for 20 years. So when I've been to the hospital, I know certain things that's wrong with me. Like, if I feel like I'm catching an infection or something, or if I feel like I'm having a pain crisis, or if I feel anything that's off, if I know, I will tell them exactly what's wrong. And I'm like, look, this, through my medical history, this is what has worked for me. This is... Like, you do all this, I promise I'm going to recover. This is what's wrong with me. Please, listen to me. Some of them will be like, they be like, nah. You know, like, they they won't even take your word for the part. Like, by the time they finally figure out what's wrong with you and, and it be exactly what you said, you already be so, so down under, so down bad, you down there in the ICU. So, I've had, I've had, things that happened to me just like that one time I was in a hospital and I felt like I was I was getting an infection I felt like I was also like getting pneumonia or something this was like some years back and I was telling the doctor like look this is what's wrong with me I can feel it I know it's about to happen this is what's wrong with me can you do this this that and the doctor proceeded to do nothing like they was like well we don't we don't think we don't think nothing wrong but too much. Like we don't see nothing in your your labs. We don't see anything or none of or none of that, or that. We don't see no toxicology, nothing in your toxicology report. You seem to be fine with me, but every time not knowing my chest is extremely hurting me and I can't breathe correctly. So I know what's going on. I know exactly like I'm about to get something, something about to happen to me. I got an infection that it's in my lungs or something. It's something that's building up in me. You never listen to me. Like, I stayed like that for like two days before they finally, she finally came in there and seen how bad I was. <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. She seen how bad I was, and then she was like, uh, <coughs> damn, excuse me. But she seen how bad I was, and when she saw how bad I was, she was like, okay. And she checked it. Then it wound up being exactly what I said. And when I said that, I man, when she came back, she ordered. She was like, I seen something on it. But by that time, I was so bad. Like, basically, I was feeling like if I went to sleep, it would have been over for me. The only person that listened to me was the nurse. The nurse had to get her and tell her that he 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 is telling me right now that if he don't get this, this, that, He's going to be, he not, he not going to be a here no more. He not going to be here no more. She never listened until then. Uh, second, the second thing I could tell y'all another time, I had a, another doctor, right? I had, this is when I was a young though. I was probably like 11 or 12. And we switched, like, I usually go to children's, but we went to, uh, we went to Howard in D.C. We went to Howard and, um. I went there, I had got sick. They kept giving me like too many medicines than what my body could handle and it was it was dropping me down. None of the medicines wasn't working for me. It was just dropping me down and I was getting worse and worse. And my mother and and I was trying to tell a doctor what work for us and all of this. 
and and stuff, all of that. And we got recommended there from um, another person was sickle cell upset. They tried her great, but they didn't treat me great. They, it was absolutely horrendous the way they trapped me. They didn't treat me well there. The nurses did, but not the doctor that I had. The nurses always treat you good, but the doctors, some of the doctors you have, man, they 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 really need to be checked. Some doctors do. But we telling them what's wrong and stuff. And then my mother was like, forget it. Like my blood is steady dropping, my hemoglobin, and everything is steady dropping. I'm getting weak, all that. I'm steady dropping. And she calls children. She like, look, he in here, he this, that, telling them what's wrong with me. And they like, I right, bring him, bring him here. Leave right now and bring him here. So so the doctor, right, she talking to the doctor. She trying to get a doctor a chance. She like telling him. And then he says, well, you think another doctor could do better than me? And she said, I think they can treat him better than what he's receiving here today. He got a little, he got angry and was like, well, take him to them then. Take him to them then. But we ain't doing nothing. My mother literally had to help me get to the ambulance. All that I had to, uh, I had to get transferred. My mother had to get me ready, do everything, get me transferred. We had to meet the ambulance and stuff. They took us over. The 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 third thing that I seen, we was in the emergency room, man. We was in the emergency room. I was messed up, but it was. Like, I'm hurting, I'm hurting bad, but I seen, it was another girl, she was hurting very bad, like, it was worse than me, she was tore up, like, I could see it, she was real messed up, and the girl was trying to tell the doctor, this, this what's wrong with me, I need this, this, that, the doctor, look, the doctor straight told her, y'all, she was, she was, she was an argument, she was trying to be nice, she was like, look, I'm not, but I'm not, you trying to, Say that you don't know anything. I'm just trying to say that this is what helps for me. And, and stuff like that. She was just trying to tell him and be nice about it. He was like... He started laid, uh, listing all his credentials and stuff. Talking about what he graduated from. He was like, I'm a specialized doctor. I specialize with sickle cell. If you don't like the way I'm treating you, you leave. And she, she literally had to get her stuff and leave while she was punished like that. She had to call... I think it was, I don't know if it was her boyfriend or her brother, y'all. I don't know because I wasn't talking to her. So I don't know. But he had came, got her, and took her somewhere else. She wasn't in, in children's, though. She was an adult. But I happened to go to the same hospital. I could have went to children's, but I went there because we went, tried different things. We went to, uh, what was it? I can't, I can't remember what hospital it was, but he told her straight like that. The second... The second thing uh, is I wish people knew uh, more about, like, I, for example, pain crisis, right? When, when we are in those, a lot of people, because there is no external injury, you know, they can't see the injury. They can't see, like, your arm that's broke. They can't see on the inside. They can't tell that it's on the inside. It's eternally. They, they think that they have to physically see something a lot of the time. So you could be messed up real bad, you could be in school, you could be anywhere, you could be on a job or anything like that. They don't know how badly fucked up, you, messed up you are, right? So they're, they, in their mind, you are right, and or they'll try to tell you, like, you don't look that bad, you look good, you are you right, you gonna be good, and, and this and that, you're like, nah, look, man, I'm, I'm, I'm crushed, like, right now, I, I'm not doing well, I'm, I'm real messed up right now. I can't move. And, and as a person telling y'all, man, as a person who broke his arm before, had, had like, messed up little ligaments in his knee, twisted ankles, did all that, right? Had injuries, did all that to myself. And nothing compares to that. I'm talking about the severe pain crisis and nothing compared to it. I'm not making, throwing no shots at anybody who has had broken broken limbs or anything like that I dealt with other pain but I'm just speaking from my side as a person with sickle cell who had injuries before nothing nothing compares to that man I've been in the hospital like I'm talking about I've been down out for a month like months just because of crisis but they they don't understand just how badly messed up you are 
They don't understand that. And they look. I'm like, man, it don't look like too much wrong with you. Another thing, I'm going to go on to the third thing. Like, doing job interviews, right? So this is the third thing. Doing, like, job interviews or something like that. You go for a job. You know, you talk to them. They like you and everything. They liking everything you saying. And you got to do the urine test now. But you have to take, you know, when you have sickle cell, you might have pain crisis or anything like that. So you have to take pain medicine to deal with that, right? You take pain medicine to deal with that. And when you deal, when you take it, like you probably had it like a week ago, or you ain't taking it like that, but you had it that one time, and you pee in the cup, and you got to know, you're like, look, man, you might find something on there because I literally, it was either I took that or I was going to be in the hospital for weeks. I had to take this or you going to be in, I had to be in the hospital for weeks. And they be like, oh, okay, and all that. And uh, after, you know, they'll call you and they'll be like, um, like the attitude, this, this, that. And they'll tell you, but they'll be like, I don't think this is a fit for you, this job or anything like that. You're like, wow. Right? Really, you know what it is. You know what it is. It's, what it is is business. It's like, uh, it's like, why would I pick you, right? It's like, why would I pick you when I can get somebody who doesn't have anything that could show up? Like, even if you're good at it, that's what it is. And it's just like, all right, but say that that's what it is. Don't, don't do it. Uh, what's the analogy I can use? Kind of like what Joe Rogan say, it begin with an H. And the, the last word of that begin with a D. Anybody who watched the Joe Rogan experience know what I'm talking about. But don't sugarcoat things to me. Just say what it is, man. And uh, the the fourth the fourth thing that I wish that some people knew is the like the weather, right? The effects of the weather could have on you when they reach their spring like the extremes to the weather. So for example, when it's extreme cold, right? I don't like being outside when it's extremely cold, like or for long periods of time doing things. So you might be out there. You on a job or something, or you chilling with your friends or something, or with somebody else. Y'all outside, and you like, man, look, I'm starting to ache, bruh. This this cold weather starting to get to me. It's making me hurt. You know, you like it's making me hurt, and I'm um, my anemia, cause the sickle cell SS comes with the anemia part. Like that's why it's called sickle cell SS anemia. I like I feel like I got hypothermia right now, and I'm about to. Leave, go to the car, or something to warm up, or I'm about to go, go in the house. Like if you with your boys, you like you're about to go in the house. But if you on a job, you like man, I gotta go go somewhere where I can warm up. And they think it's like they thinking you like, just trying to be, you know, bad a bad person or something like a bad worker. But it's not that. It's not like that. It's you cold like your finger, my fingertips starting to turn blue and all that. You're like nah, I ain't playing around. Like, I'm, I'm cold, bro. It's been like five hours I've been out here with you just nonstop. And you like, man, my fingers turning blue. You show them all that. Then they look and they be like, oh, okay. Then they, sorry about that, y'all. I had got a call. But then they look and they be like, oh, I'm sorry about that. That's that's on me. And they finally understand. You know, they finally understand that. And they'll let you go. You know what I'm saying? But I... Or if it's the other way around, extreme heat. You can't be out there in the extreme heats because extreme levels of heat. You need more fluid and all that. And your blood is a little lower. Even with the blood transfusions, if you get those, it's lower than other people's. So you and it, you, uh, you attempt to go see somebody for that and uh, get up out of there. You know, and they don't quite understand that. With that being said, man, that's the end of this video. I hope. If y'all if y'all enjoyed it, if y'all relate to any of your things, comment down below. Please like, share, and subscribe. This I hope it can get around out there into the you know algorithm. But I'll be back with more vids, man. Peace.